I'm News for Jaxis and Chief Meteorologist David Eckerd. One of the more hot topics concerning Hurricane Ian was the actual forecast and how much lead time the residents in southwest Florida truly had before landfall. And when you actually kind of deep dive into it, it ends up being a little bit more complicated than actually initially reported. So let's first off talk about the very first forecast cone that the National Hurricane Center issued. This was with Tropical Depression 9, which ended up becoming Tropical Storm Ian. This was issued on Friday. This is the 5 a.m. advisory. And one thing you notice very, very quickly is you can see here the forecast cone does include portions of southwest Florida and it does actually have a landfall very, very close to the true landfall. Now keep in mind this was five days out, so already the Hurricane Center was really zeroing in on Ian during the initial uh, the initial forecast that happened again on that Friday. But as we got into the weekend, things got very messy with the computer models. You can see some of the updated models that came in on Saturday. This is Saturday's run. A lot of the models were beginning to quickly shift their way westward. In fact, one of the more reliable models, the GFX, actually had a landfall at one point during the weekend along the coast of Louisiana. And this forced the Hurricane Center to kind of tilt their forecast cone a little bit further towards the north, when, which resulted in the cone actually making, actually the center of the cone being very close to the Big Bend area of Florida. That kind of gave a bit of a false security to southwest Florida because officially, they were still in the forecast cone and the computer models will eventually tilt their way back towards the west. So this is actually Monday's forecast cone and you can see by Monday that landfall is very, very close to the Tampa Bay area Wednesday into early Thursday. That's what really got Tampa Bay motivated to do evacuations in Pinellas County. And of course, as we know, the system eventually organized further in the Gulf and made landfall very close to Fort Myers, uh, just to the west on some of the barrier islands there. But we need to really go a little bit more in depth about the forecast cone itself. So how the forecast cone is drawn is little dots that are produced on a five day cycle. These uh, produce, they also predict storm intensity as well. But the dots that you see are what we've called the center. Those actually have errors with them. And the National Hurricane Center uses those errors to actually set what's called the forecast cone. The size of the circles determined by historical track errors. Those track errors are based on forecasts from the last five years. And the cone is actually formed by drawing a circle around each point. And that's a very important part. The forecast cone does not mean that the entire area is going to see impacts. What it means is that's the area at the that the center of circulation could end up being. The National Hurricane Center tries to put the center of circulation around two thirds of the time in the storm center. And that is exactly what happened with Ian. The landfall point in Cayo Costa was never removed from the forecast cone at any point during the five day period. And it did look like regardless of landfall, there was going to be a big storm surge threat. Storm surge warnings went up on Sunday night, Monday morning for a good deal of the west coast of Florida. So people did have a head start on Ian, but it was somewhat difficult to delineate the forecast because of the big shift by the forecast models. The big stress though is if you are in the forecast cone, you are still in the possibility of seeing the center of circulation. Unfortunately, that's what happened with Southwest Florida. I'm Assistant Chief Meteorologist David Eckerd for Channel 4, The Local Station.